at the University of Texas in Houston, a team of international researchers is exploring how nanotechnology could help revive the three decades old war on cancer. The team was brought together by Mauro Ferrari, an Italian-born mathematical physicist and engineer and father of five. Then it changed into an hexagon. Oh, it's right. The reason I started uh, becoming interested in cancer and in medicine is really deeply personal. This is the case for many people, after all. I was a professor of engineering with a mathematical physics background at Berkeley, and my wife of 10 years became sick with cancer and she died. Okay. And to me, it was very hard to understand why so many of the great technologies that were available could not be translated into cancer, new therapies, based on the fact that at the end of the day, many of the problems that we face in cancer are physics and engineering program problems. How do you bring the drug to the right place? How do you avoid the biological barriers? These are problems that are very well suited for a solution that is a teamwork solution. In my group, in my research group, uh, I have people with very diverse backgrounds, electrical engineers, physicists, working together with oncologists, with cancer biologists. I had writers, I had musicians in my groups, because sometimes the ways in which you can obtain inspiration comes from angles that you would not uh, suspect. From the time the first cell mutates into a cancer from a healthy situation, to the time the cancer becomes clinically detectable, that can be 10, 15 years. You would think that we have many opportunities to catch it in midair. However, it is very difficult to do so. The detection of cancer can only happen for sure with identification of molecules. Sometimes we call them biomarkers that are typical of cancer. In Mauro Ferrari's lab, Ennio Tashati is dotting blood serum on nano-engineered silicon wafers that can filter out the tiny telltale molecules associated with cancer. What we have here are silicon wafers and uh, we can make uh, different pore sizes so that we can have 7 nanometers, 15 nanometers, 30 nanometers pores. These tiny sub-microscopic pores filter out 90% of the normal proteins found in the blood of healthy people. The tiniest proteins and peptides get trapped inside the pores, and these would include any cancer biomarkers if they were present. So what our chips do, they allow us to capture these molecules they were interested in so that we can then see them with a big instrument called the mesh spectrometer. It brings up spikes. With those, we can tell if you get cancer or not. The spikes tells us that the little tiny molecules are there that are the signal for cancer. Without the chips, you wouldn't even see them because they would be lost in so many other molecules that are swimming around. 20 years from now, cancer is going to be treated in an entirely different fashion. We will be able to screen everybody many times in a year and pick up early signals of disease from blood draws. With the therapies that we use today against cancer, we need to inject 10,000 parts of a drug to make sure that one part reaches the cancer. The other 9,999 will hit cells that are healthy and they are doing something important inside of the body. What nanotechnology is trying to do is to make sure that we direct the weapons, that we bring the war on a door-to-door -door basis only to the place where there are enemies to be fought off. In the lab, Ennio Tashati is checking to see if tiny silicon microshells could be used as targeted drug delivery vehicles. The idea is that the microshells could be loaded up with cancer drugs and tagged with a targeting molecule that binds them only to cancer cells. When they reach the tumor, they dissolve releasing the drugs and killing the cancer cells. These are real silicon microshells that NEO has loaded with a cargo of green fluorescent quantum dots. He is testing to see if they will be taken up by cancer cells. We're looking at prostate cancer cells that have been treated with silicon microparticles loaded with quantum dots. 
the fluorescence it's spread all over the cells and that's proof of principle that we can release uh, what we have loaded inside the microparticles and it's able to find its way inside the cell. We can treat almost all kind of tumor cells with our approach. I think we are on the verge of conquering cancer. I think our, the generation that is growing up now, my daughters, my son, will be able to live in a world where cancer is no longer a death sentence for anybody. The disease will never disappear, it cannot be eliminated, but what we can eradicate in full is death and suffering due to cancer. I think that is within the generation that is growing right now for them to see.